Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for The Boys Season 2. Uh, in this video I will give my overall thoughts of Season 2 of The Boys as a whole. So I have to start with a spoiler warning for The Boys. All of Season 2, if you have not seen up to the very end of Season 2, you will not want to watch this video. Otherwise, some things will be spoiled for you. So, Season 2 of The Boys... I actually really loved. I think I heard a lot from a lot of different people that they were really disappointed with the season. A lot of people thought the season was moving way too slow. Um, I think it's been a while since I've seen season one, but I do think comparatively speaking, it was a bit slower than season one. There wasn't as much sort of craziness going on. But I actually really liked... Uh, season 2 of The Boys. And I would say probably just as much as I liked Season 1. I think uh, Season 1 has some higher high points. But I also think Season 1 had lower low points as well. I think uh, Season 2 didn't have as many um, things that kind of annoyed me or I thought was silly uh, as Season 1 did. But it also missed some of the, the really high points of season one. So it was more consistent. Um, I really liked it. Um, yeah, I think it was definitely slower and more character based. But I think it needed to be more character based. That was part of my issue with season one. Uh, is that we didn't get to know some of these characters enough. Particularly the characters of the boys. Which I thought since the show was called the boys we should spend more time with the boys and season two definitely obliged that and i did really mu very much appreciate that um so season two began uh with the the first episode i actually didn't really like that much i do agree that season two got off to a rough start because season one ended on a cliffhanger and season two kind of really copped out on that cliffhanger and didn't kind of resolve it or really get into the the crutch of it until like several episodes later and because they did like this time jump thingy where they just skipped ahead and um butcher was kind of separate and he shows up or whatever i think that was episode two he doesn't even show up till um and it's i didn't yeah i didn't really appreciate that I thought, and see, the first episode I thought was too slow, and I thought it was kind of a poor way that it was too obvious, like, oh, they're introducing the season, um, which they sh could have done some of this set up at the end of season one, uh, and yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't think it got off to a good start, but I did think it got better um going forward i think the episode two and three sort of made up for it and also made up for the fact that they dropped all three episodes at once i know a lot of people were upset that they didn't drop the whole season at once like they did last year but i'm fine with it like i kind of prefer it in some ways because that allowed me to do weekly video reviews on it um i wouldn't mind if they dropped it all at once but i like it this way probably a little bit better it's ridiculous because I heard some people were giving it bad reviews just because, like, not even judging the show itself, just because that they didn't drop it all at once. And I, I don't know. I hate to use the word privilege, but that sounds a bit privileged to me. Uh, I actually hope that all streaming services go back to a weekly format because I think it's just better. But anyway, that's just my opinion. <laughs> some people disagree. But, um... But at least they dropped these three episodes at once, so that allowed us to, because episode two, two and three picked up the pace a bit. Uh, we got introduced to uh, Kimiko's brother, which was an interesting storyline. We got more into St um, Stormfront, who became a huge character this season. And we had some, you know, silly set pieces, such with the, you know, the dead whale and whatnot. Um... I will say for this first half of the season, I really hated the Deep <laughs> and his character and his storyline. I started to pick up on it a bit more in the later season. First of all, he appeared less in the later season, which I like. And secondly, it became sort of more relevant that the, this church was a big player and it was going to affect the Seven. But then by the end of the season, the church kind of didn't do anything and the guy died and the Deep didn't get back. So in retrospect, the Deep storyline seems like it was a huge waste of time so i hope uh season three does something to justify it but anyway 
I would say my favorite episodes this season were four, five, no, sorry, four, six, and eight. So, like, every even number except for two. Two was good, too, though, but four, six, and eight were, were my favorites. Now, episode four, I think a lot of people weren't that big on. I think you kind of had to be big into the Annie and um, Huey relationship, which I am. And I actually loved uh, everything involving these characters this season. I know a lot of people complained about it in season one i didn't mind it i actually liked it in season one i liked it even better this season i thought episode four was a really great uh, character story um i liked it got more see this is it's exactly what i'm talking about where they didn't explain or explore the characters of the boys uh that much in season one with maybe the exception of billy butcher um they all felt kind of like um cardboard cut out like stereotypes particularly Frenchie, Mother's Milk, and Kimiko and I think those characters got a lot more um, explored and fleshed out this season because episode 4 not only fleshed out Annie and um, Huey's character but and their relationship but it also fleshed out Mother's Milk's character and also Frenchie and Kimiko and their relationship. Kimiko's whole storyline in the first three episodes with her brother that definitely fleshed her out a lot more so, yeah, I actually really appreciated this from a character standpoint. I don't think every episode needs to be like this high stakes, high tension, you know, dolphins flying out car windows or, you know, boats smashing into whales kind of thing that you can have uh, just like I think one of my favorite scenes of the entire season was the scene in episode four where uh, Huey and... Um, and Annie are singing along to the Billy Joel's We Didn't Start to Fire. I just thought that was hilarious how they got so into it. And Mother's Milk is just like, enough! This isn't a date! Like, I laughed, like, hysterically at that. That was just so good. And I just liked, I just think that Huey and Annie's relationship is really cute. And I think it really works. And I liked, I actually liked how by the end of the episode, they kind of agreed that they shouldn't see each other. Or at least Annie sort of made that decree. But then, the t because she was worried about them. And, but uh, the two of them sort of get closer uh, later in the season as well. In fact, like the more Annie gets involved with the boys and what they were doing, the more I liked it, the more interesting I liked. Particularly in episode six, which is, has said, another one of my favorite episodes, where she bonded with Butcher. I thought that was a really interesting storyline. I totally bought I bought how. You know, Butch didn't like her at first. He did, tried to actually shot her in season one, and how he was really like bigoted towards superheroes, which you they do explain a bit more uh, why that is. But um, I really love how she, he was. They were able to bond, and she they were able to come to an understanding, uh, mainly through their love of Huey. So I really like that. As well, and the more so, the more she was involved with the boys, the more I liked it. I kind of wish she would join them full time. I was a little bit disappointed at the end of the season where she rejoined the seven, but I suppose you know she has to go back and try to change things from the inside or whatnot. But I actually, I would have preferred she become a full on member of the boys. Um, <laughs> I kind of liked when she was when they they were hiding out, when she was like a fugitive and they turned against her and she's had to hide out with the boys. Um, that was that was really cool. Uh, and of course, season six. Uh, I mean, sorry, episode six with Lamplighter and the whole like mental institution with the Cindy you know, like exploding people and the giant penises attacking people. Like that was that was really good stuff. I really enjoyed it, and as I said, episode 8, the finale, it was an amazing finale, I thought it was an absolute great way uh, to end the season, uh, shocking revelation, uh, episode 7, that was mo mostly a set up episode, but then towards the end I had that really shocking, uh, the red hearing, <laughs> some people call it, where everyone's head's just exploding, and then when you get the revelation of the finale, that it was the congresswoman, Newman, all along, Newman. 
Uh, that was a great revelation that shocked the hell out of me, especially when that Church of the Collective, that guy's head just exploded as soon as he popped open the fresco, his head exploded. Uh, that was that was really good stuff. So I thought, and of course the whole confrontation beating Stormfront. See, this is what I like. I like um, Stormfront's include uh, her inclusion in season two. But I like that they gave us some finality with the character. Now, that doesn't, by finality, I don't mean like she's never coming back because I'm sure she is uh, because she's not dead. So I'm sure she'll come back in some form. Maybe they'll Darth Vader her up or whatever. But um, you, it was still felt like finality, like because she, she got her come on up and uh, they confronted her um, and whatnot. So, yeah, and I just felt all the characters, like Billy Butcher in particular, like his true character story this season worked really well. The fact where he reconnected with Becca, but she wouldn't run away with them because he still had prejudice against soups and wouldn't look after her son. Uh, and how he had to get over that. In the next episode, he was got like, a bit suicidal, wanted to run away, but eventually got over that. And then uh, eventually learned to trust her again and was going to betray her, but then changed his mind and just couldn't do it and saw what a loving mother she was to her son and just couldn't take that away from her. And then, of course, it ends in tragedy when she dies and he does promise, even though the son was partially responsible for her death, he promised her with because she with her dying breath she made him promise that he'd look after him so he did make sure he was looked after so that was a really good character arc that was a really good uh character story uh for billy butcher it humanized him a lot more this season i know he wasn't there was no laser babies that were <laughs> exploding people's heads so what maybe wasn't as fun but it was still really interesting from a character standpoint uh so i thought it was kind of better better storytelling uh to be honest now as far as stormfront goes we get this uh very political storyline which i know kind of alienated some people i personally love when shows make uh political commentaries uh, especially if i agree with said political commentary which i 100 percent do in this case of uh, i mean come on the the way that Stormfront and Homelander were behaving and using the fear of these supervillain foreign terrorists and, and inciting fear in foreigners and, and immigrants in general and how you know this and this actually this constant bombardment of propaganda actually you know, was responsible for a really nice guy just going out and shooting someone at random because he was so afraid. And the language that Stormfront and Ham Homelander would use, thoughts and prayers <laughs> when that happened, but they just dismissed it out of hand and continued to spread the fear mongering that made it happen in the first place. And their fears about, oh, I can't remember exactly they said, but we're going to make this, <laughs> we're going to make this country as great as it once was or something. Yeah. <clears throat> Not very veiled commentary on and who they're actually, uh, uh, making this analogy with. And, uh, I loved it. <laughs> to be honest, I think it was on point, 1,000%. Of course, not to be seen as leaning too far one way. They had the congresswoman who's very obviously a, uh analogy for AOC, a very left-wing, uh, prominent politician. They made her be the villain in the end, so try to, trying to balance it out a little bit, but still, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's obvious like who they were attacking and be to be fair like season one did have a little bit of this too like the whole uh religious um you know camp or whatever where they were uh, preaching aspirants or ever and they took shots at them here they took more shots at the, the fear mongering uh that goes on with immigrants and whatnot and i think uh, and plus the fact that stormfront was an outright nazi when she denied being one, because that's the thing with uh, modern day racists is that they deny being racist. Uh, and I think Stormfront was a really great analogy to that, the way she talked about white genocide. <sighs> yeah. So, again, it was really cathartic at the end of the season to see her completely 
blown up and, and ripped to shreds. And first, before that, she got her ass kicked by, you know, Starlight and uh, Queen Maeve. Uh, Queen Maeve had an interesting storyline. It didn't focus on her too much, but the fact that Homelander outed her and was using that against her and how Vault tried to, like, corporatize and monopolize on that relationship and how fake it was and and like she's just like uh you know she's bisexual it's like no that doesn't sell as well like <laughs> and how her girlfriend ended up leaving her because they found out about the evidence i do i think that airplane scene in season one was one of the most powerful scenes in the entire show so i like how it came back in a way, in that Queen Maeve used this to uh, basically win the day to blackmail Homelander to get him the two step down. Plus, I think Homelander's character story made a lot of sense. Like, he really wanted to be a father to Ryan. Um, but he obviously, I'm like throwing him off the roof, he would be an abusive father. He, because he's a sociopath and he's not a good guy uh, even though he does mean well and it was good seeing that one scene where he was relating to him but the best thing for Ryan is to stay as far away from Homelander as possible and I love how Queen Maeve was able to manipulate him because they made it clear that Homelander's need to be loved which again has to do with his fucked up upbringing overwhelms everything else and if the public and everyone turned against him and they made this very clear earlier in the season because they started to turn against him when this video came out but then you know with storm from his help they helped to sway public opinion and so even then he was freaking out but if they this airplane uh video came out then he would be completely fucked uh, and he just and I love that scene where they had the the audio of the crowds cheering and how he closed his eyes because that's what he needs. And of course they ended up with a scene of him jerking off over the city, which you know, you know what show you're watching. This is the boys. Um, so it was interesting that this the end of the season got a bit more rev resolution than I was expecting because uh, Billy Butcher and the other boys are no longer being hunted and no longer vigilantes and now sort of more black ops working for the government. Of course, they work for Congresswoman Newman, who we know is a villain some way. We don't know who she's affiliated with or why exactly she was popping heads. But uh, is she working with Vaught? I tend to think not. I think that she's working for a third party that's not Vault and not the church and someone, or maybe even just herself. I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe it is as simple as her working with Vought. We'll see. Uh, and we got more Stan Eggers in the season, a.k.a. Gus Fring, <laughs> who, I mean, I'm sorry, the actor plays him exactly like Gus Fring. That one scene when they were negotiating with Billy Butcher when trying to get the Ryan back, like, you could have taken that scene and put it directly into Better Call Saul or Breaking Bad and it would fit perfectly just change the context he was acting exactly like Gus Frank not to say he's a bad actor he's obviously an amazing actor but it was clear that the showrunners were like let's put Gus Frank in this show but <laughs> anyway because it's like oh I'm all about a business I am a simple businessman and how he's a scary motherfucker um but anyway <laughs> that was also interesting um and yeah a train's a train his fall from grace and his return by uh, teaming up to take down Homelander. Does that mean A train's going to team up with the boys in the future? No, not necessarily. That was more of a one-time thing. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it was a was a definitely an interesting character development. I love how Frenchie and um, Kamiko a lot closer now that the scene of Kamiko she had her fear or PTSD over Stormfront killing her brother and how they resolved that pretty well at the end where she just laughed at her and said I'm gonna kick you in and you're a Nazi kitty or whatever and then ended up kicking her ass uh that was good re character resolution and then of course Frenchie she, she taught her, him her sign language and they went out dancing at the end so that's all lovely and uh Hugh and, and uh, Starlight are back together, and as I said, they had a really cute relationship, but Huey feels he needs to move on for the boys, so he goes to work for 
the person we know is secretly the villain. So, again, setting up for a new dynamic in Season 3, but an interesting one. So, all in all, I think this was a really effective season. As I said, I like it just as much as Season 1. Uh, kind of in different ways, but probably I would value it the same. So, my rating for The Boys Season 2 out of 10 is a 9 excellent I thought this was, maybe the season got off to too slow of a start and it caught out a bit at the beginning, but it slowly started to build it up more and get more interesting and it got deeper into the characters, particularly the characters of the boys, which I very much appreciate. I think the character stories were stronger this season. Maybe they didn't have quite as many shocking moments. I mean, they did have some, you gotta admit, but... Uh, yeah, and the ending really pulled it through, and it was really powerful, and uh, I think, yeah, seeing Starlight with Billy Butcher and all those sorts of things, I think they really pulled everything together, so I did find this quite a powerful season. So that's it for my review of The Boys Season 2. Thanks so much for watching this video. Whenever The Boys comes back, of course, I'll be here to review it. In the meantime, you can check out my channel as I review many other shows like Discovery, The Expanse, all sorts of Star Trek shows, BoJack Horseman, Breaking Bad, and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.